Welcome to Darlington, South Carolina, where for more than half a century, Labor Day weekend has meant a celebration of speed. Today, the NASCAR Busch Series will qualify for their Saturday 200-mile race. Let's go trackside today, Burns. Well, we're on the move, Mike, because Kevin Harvick doing double duty this weekend has just finished practicing his Winston Cup car. Hang on right here. He's getting, he's getting a message here on his PDA as well. Okay, Kevin, third this morning in practice in your Bush car. Good enough to sit on the pole, and what do you have to do to get that pole position? Well, I think we got a shot at it, but uh, the biggest thing here is control your slide good enough to where you give yourself enough room to get up off the corner. So we're just uh, excited this weekend. We got honey roasted Reese's and honey roasted payday. It's a, it's a couple months special edition candy bar. and I can get one? You can get them in the grocery store. So it's a, it's a cool looking car, man. All right, we'll see if we can set it on the pole. Bob Dillner? Well, Dave, the heat is a major factor today at Darlington. Temperatures already in the 90s, but the key is the track temperature. Almost 130 degrees already, and that could spell trouble for some of the guys going out early. One of them is Mike Bliss. Mike, you go out four, so how is this heat and the early draw going to affect you? The only thing is uh, if the clouds come in later, that's going to help cool the racetrack down. Right now, if the sun stays out, it's going to be the same for everybody. But uh, if we had clouds come, uh, it's going to hurt our, our effort. But, uh, you know, I'm not really on top. I'm I'm probably hurting the team a little bit as far as qualifying. But we, we got a good race car, I think, for the race. Both Gibbs racing cars go out in the top five, guys. Thanks, Bobby. Hi, everybody. Mike Joy with Jeff Hammond and Larry McReynolds at Darlington. And Jeff, uh, I don't know if it's because it's the last Labor Day weekend or what, but we got a big field of cars for this Bush race. Yes, we do, Mike. We got a really big field of cars. And the thing about this racetrack, this racetrack is a rhythm racetrack, and it's a track where you've got to race the racetrack. Here at Darlington, for all these guys, they've already gone out. Several of them have run a lot of laps here. And as old Dick Trickle used to tell me, a lot of times you got to tune on the driver before you tune on the car. Larry's starting position isn't that important everywhere, but here, 200 miles, this is just a sprint race. It's a very short race, Mike, and the biggest thing is, is surprisingly, it normally don't have a lot of caution flags where you can get bunched up and where you can adjust on your race car. But the most unique thing about qualifying here, unlike almost anywhere we go, the mile and a half racetracks, or even like last week at Bristol, where they qualify right around the bottom, not here at this racetrack. They're going to be right against that wall, and you allow just enough space where, as some of them didn't do in practice, Kyle Busch in particular, you get against that wall so it's a tricky place to qualify all right we'll separate these two and be ready for the first car to qualify when we come back nascar bush series qualifying at darlington on speed welcome back to darlington raceway set to go with pole qualifying for the nascar bush series and you saw a scrape on the front fender and all down the side of the 72. That's just Darlington. Nothing special about that, is there? No, wait a minute. It is a little bit something special. It's the Darlington Stripe, Mike. I mean, everybody talks about coming to Darlington and getting the Stripe. That's what you want to see. If you're going to have a Stripe, that's the right kind, isn't it, Larry? Not that's too it. hard, just slightly, and that means you're getting all you can get out of your race car, at least you hope. Well, I guess special was a bad word. Unique. There's nothing <laughs> unique about it. No. And uh, there is, uh, you saw cause and effect right there and by the time this weekend is over trust me this white wall all the way around this racetrack will look just like that in other words you'll see more black than you will white and speaking of black how about the new patches uh in the corners here the drivers have, have had to navigate those and uh, a little bit of new asphalt there which is probably not a terrible thing here and, th and this is the thing i want to stress about this qualifying session right here everywhere we go it's mostly two laps of qualifying but this place is so hard on tires. The racing surface is almost like a piece of 80 grit sandpaper. I've even told my tire men before, don't even roll the tires across the garage here. Put them on a wagon and carry them. <laughs> because if you don't get it done on the first lap, chances are you're probably not going to be fast on the second lap because it gives up so much grip. You're exactly right, Larry. The only way you pick up on the second lap is just basically wreck on the first one and have to complete the second and put a decent time down. This racetrack is just, I mean, unbelievable when it comes to wearing tires out. And when the tires go away, baby, you lose a ton of grip. Stan Boyd's car would not fire, so the second car in line, Coy Gibbs, heads out onto the speedway. He qualified 36th here for the spring race, finished 14th. We talk about this a lot right here as Coy comes through turn three and four to take the green flag with a qualifying run where you're normally going to be quick on your first lap. That three and four speed coming to take the green can be very important to dictate the speed for your qualifying lap, how you get to the green flag. 
And Larry, as you pointed out earlier, when they come to this racetrack here, you don't try to keep it on the bottom. You send it in on the bottom, but you let her slide up. Kevin Harvick's already said, controlled slide is what this racetrack's all about. You go in low, let the car slide up, pick the throttle back up here and picking it up right there, and you drive her off the corner. But normally, how you run fast at Darlington is you roll out the throttle early, getting into the corner, pick the throttle up very early, well before the center of the corner. Boy Gibbs comes in here 16th in the point standings. First lap of 30.82. He was 27th quickest in practice. He ran a 30.74. And again, uh, you know, we may see some cars go ahead and run the second lap as you see Corey Gibbs doing here. But I don't think that many cars will run quicker on their second lap. But Larry, let's also point out the fact that these cars actually practice earlier this morning. Their practice actually ended about 11.15 this morning. And there's been a Winston Cup practice since that time. So the racetrack has basically probably slowed down, got more rubber on it. So don't really be surprised if the overall speeds are a little bit slower during this practice, I mean, qualifying session. And Coy gave up about a tenth on his second lap. 30.821, the track record, which does not appear to be in jeopardy today, 28.876, Ryan Newman in March of 01. New paint job for Gibbs teammate. And this will be Mike Bliss, the defending Craftsman Truck Series champ. The story behind this paint scheme, Mike, is the, the Rockwell Automation people, they had a contest for the kids of the employees of Rockwell Auto Auto Automation. They had over 1,200 entries, and Terry Lynn Smith from actually local star North Carolina, her dad works in the Belt in South Carolina at Rockwell Automation plant, uh, 11 years old. She won the contest, and this is her paint scheme right here. Looks great. The problem on Stan Boyd's car, uh, the, the engine would fire, but they were unable to secure the window now. So they'll have to get that uh, squared away for him to be able to make his qualifying pass. 47 cars were entered. One of those, Caleb Holman, has already withdrawn. So 46 cars are expected to take time. Of course, 43 will start the race. Mike Bliss quicker than his teammate at a 30.15. Jeff, there's another classic example. I think what you was talking about, maybe this racetrack being slower than in the hotter temperatures. He ran a 29.98, so he's slowed down almost two tenths from where he practices. This is another one of those racetracks where, you, as you well know, when this racetrack starts getting warm, it just gives up more and more grip with each degree it goes up. I mean, it's, it's incredible how this racetrack is affected by heat. The second lap, about six one hundred slower. So the two Gibbs cars have qualified. Mike Bliss ahead of Coy Gibbs. Bliss started fifth here in the spring race. Stan Boyd on the track to qualify tonight. Trackside at Darlington. Spring race winner Ricky Craven will be there. Bush Series star Ron Hornaday. And you never know who will stop by. Kenny Schrader's supposed to be on there coming off two good runs over the last two weeks. So trackside tonight. Stan Boyd, second lap was quicker. The first one was a bit dodgy going into turn three. So he does pick it up a little on his second lap. Dave? Mike checking in with Mike Bliss. Uh, Mike, what did you think of your lap? That uh, was not very good. <laughs> we slowed down. Uh, it just, I don't know, the racetrack, we just didn't have any grip. You know, the car was, um, was sliding around quite a bit compared to this morning, but I mean, the track's got a lot hotter and maybe everybody will slow down, but that'll be a pretty crummy time, I'm sure of that. All right, he, yeah, obviously not gonna stand up where he wants it to be, guys. Let's go to Bob. Well, Dave, everybody down here on pit road dripping wet with sweat right now, and I have my handy dandy barometer here. We're gonna check out the track temperature. Take a look at this, guys. 130, 131 degrees. This track is hot, it's slick, and what is that going to do for the guys going out next, guys? Well, I think that may be Mike Bliss's salvation. That little gauge is probably not going to get any cooler during this qualifying session. It's probably only, only going to go up. Oh, into the wall right there, Joey Planton. Larry, you talked about it, trying to get that speed up. He was trying to come through three and four right there to carry momentum. Down here to catch this green flag. What does he do? Gets right in the wall. Yeah, I mean, that's before taking the green. Exactly. Well, shows you uh, how right Mike Bliss was. Even though he got the wall, his first lap is the quickest so far in 29.78. Clanton, the uh, ASA champ, will go up and run the ASA race Labor Day in Elko, Minnesota this weekend. This group came down here and tested, and it's probably paid off, but the car that he actually tested was the one that he pretty much killed at Bristol last week. You know, it was a wreck. I don't think it was in his making. 
but uh, they were very pleased with the test, and he's going to slow down quite a bit on his second lap. But that's a good lap for Joey, especially with the track temperatures where they're at. Runner-up in the Rookie of the Year standings. This will be his first Darlington Bush Series appearance. Of course, Hank Parker Jr. drove this car back in the spring and finished sixth, so this group has this racetrack figured out as far as setup. This is going through three and four cars, sliding up the racetrack. Wasn't too awful bad. I got to give him credit for one thing. He kept his foot in it because if he hadn't, it would have not been on the pole for right now. It was a really good. He, yeah, just trimmed it down. Hey, he's got trim spa on the side of the car. Now he's <laughs> trimmed it up. There you go. Casey Mears trying not to become a target in his dodge. Full center at Chicago where he finished fourth, his best in the Bush Series. And as we've well documented throughout the season, he's running some ARCA races, some Bush Series uh, races, and all the cup races. And when we see him in this Bush car, or in the ARCA car for that matter, it seems to definitely make a difference, especially in his qualifying efforts in the Winston Cup car. That's what we've long said, no substitute for seat time, especially at a track as tricky as this one. Casey was 12th quickest in practice. Goes to the pole with a 29.74. That's going to be just a little bit slower than what he practiced. Not a lot, but a half a 10. That's a good lap right there. Another thing about this racetrack, look how much the car moves around. This is not what you call a very smooth racetrack. It takes a lot of uh, working with the shocks and spring package to really make a car work around this racetrack, as well as the driver hitting the cars. See him getting pretty loose off of both ends of the racetrack, coming off turn two and turn four, and he runs a little bit slower in his second lap, but this thing was start, definitely starting to get looser and lose that grip as he went into this qualifying run. Casey Mears is quickest ahead of Joey Clanton and Mike Bliss. Dan Part is hoping for his first start of the season in the Bush Series, but 32-23 is probably not going to make the top 36. They may have to fall back on a provisional spot. Jason White comes out to qualify. No wind tunnel tonight. The wind tunnel is shut off for the weekend, but every Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time, you'll see what, for my money, is the most entertaining racing show on television. Dave Despain. No shortage of opinions on wind tunnel. And you can add yours by phoning in Monday through Thursday. The other thing that's kind of funny about the wind tunnel deal, too, we watched Jason White go off in the turn one. I guess you'd have to say, Dave Despain, he ain't scared when it comes to <laughs> stating his opinion. <laughs> no, he is not. That's a great show. And, you know, even so, he's had some strong guests. He has. You know, I mean, he has. Jeff Gordon will go on there, and Mike Helton's been on there. And, you know, Dave's right there at him. All right, Jason White. Who did not run this? Yes, he did. He ran the spring race here, started 28th, finished 40th. And 3086, that puts him fifth quickest right now. He actually picked up just a little bit from what he practiced, and he was 29th quickest in He's practice. A, got real loose right there off of turn two. So that's through one and two right there. Then we got two loose. I think it's going to lose some time. An interesting situation in the Bush garage area today where there were four cars that each had two different drivers in them in practice, sorting, sorting things out and around. Yeah, Jeff, you see he slowed down a whole lot there on his second lap. Uh, let's see what Mr. Dave Burns has dug up now. Well, both the Darlington Stripe and the driver who just earned it, Joey Clanton, uh, you told me you didn't think it was that quick, but apparently it was. Well, we... Uh... You know, I knew it was quick. I mean, we was going to have a first half. The lap was quick because I come through one or two and just, I mean, it was flat on the floor and didn't, didn't have to lift at all. But, you know, trying to get the Francois Pontiac up front, it, you know, my guys worked hard all day long. We tried to stay off the wall all day, and the lady in black finally got us in qualifying when you're running your fastest lap. But, uh, you know, all in all, this, this is just a little cosmetic. You know we're going to get them tomorrow, so the guys will do their job, get it, get it back going, and uh, hopefully we'll get a good run out of this. And he did confirm for me, Bob, never touched it in practice, but when he was going for it, caught a little bit of the wall happens here at Darlington. Jamie McMurray ready to take his swap on the orange number one out onto the lady in black. Jamie, we've been watching qualifying. Do you have a shot at the pole? Well, I mean, I hope so. I mean, we had a pretty good car in practice, but um, we really just need to get up front and get a good starting position. We did a lot of race practice this morning, and the car was really good, so 
just get through here with that hit in the wall and get a good starting spot for tomorrow and hopefully take the yellow dodge to the front. And Mike, if you remember, he did hit the wall on the final lap, finishing second backwards here at Darlington in the spring. Still, it was second. Still second, it but was it was exciting. Wild one. John Hayden in the uh, Premier Chevy, sixth out of eight right now, 30.89. Mike, I want to point out, and I think Larry will back me up on this. What happens to a lot of these drivers when you get through one and two and really get up? There's another car almost in a while. When you go through one and two and carry your speed down the back straightaway, what happens? Turn three comes up so quick on you. Next thing you know, you carry that speed off in there. Your car doesn't hold like you think it should, and it slides up that extra half a foot. It's been kind of like your cushion all day long, and you run out of trouble. And in turn three, you don't have that extra half a foot because turn three is tighter than turns one and two. Final practice for the NASCAR Winston Cup cars for the final Labor Day weekend shootout at Darlington. Noon, Eastern time, happy hour right here on speed. For Rich Markle in this 68 car, did he ever have his hands full off turn two right there? Like you say, Jeff, it's so bumpy, and if the car gets loose, it just keeps getting looser and looser. If the car starts pushing or the front end don't turn, it just pushes worse until you slow the speed of the car down. Would you say he was fighting bees about that time? Uh, he was very busy, very busy. Jeff, it looks like they've got the front of the car. They're trying to soften it to get the nose down into the racetrack, which works pretty well until you hit one of those dips, and then the car takes off like it's a boat busting awake. Yeah, that's where you kind of like, and you hate to say this, but it looks like they've got the spring and the shock package not matched up very well. And the car collapses down and tries to rebound. It looks like it's almost like it's jerking the wheels up off the ground. The car is just really not very steady at all. But, I mean, he did a good job hanging on him. Right now, he's seventh fastest at a 31-39. Rick Markle trying to make his 10th Bush Series start. Phil Bonnefeld went out on the track in the Danny Boss number 22, but never got up to speed and pulled in. Here's Dave. And hey Mike saying bye with Casey Mears. Casey, uh, you weren't exactly happy with that lap. Didn't do what expected you to? No, I mean, we were a little bit tight in practice, and uh, we didn't know quite what it was going to do for qualifying. Sometimes it frees up here, so we kind of left it alone. And, and just got real, real, real tight in, in that qualifying run. I mean, it was way tighter than it was in practice. So, I mean, not real happy with that because we, we lost a little time compared to where we were this morning. But, you know, I think the track has slowed down a little bit. It's getting hotter. So hopefully everybody else kind of slows down that little bit too, but, but I doubt it. There's some fast guys that are coming up. It's a solid lap, but not, not the best one for us, for sure. All right, solid is the key anyway, Mike. Ron Barfield is on track in the number 73 Ford. This driver who first came to notice under the uh, tutelage of the Elliots uh, down at Dawsonville, Georgia, and has had a kind of a sporadic career in and out of NASCAR since. But he's in the uh, perfection number 73, trying to work his way into this field. Yeah, he was uh, 38th quickest in practice at a 31.76. Probably going to need to pick it up from that. And uh, he picks it up a little bit, but he's only going to be ninth quickest out of 11 cars that has attempted to qualify. Guys, I want to back up just a second. We talked a minute ago about Rick Markle. Uh, when I was talking about how he qualified at a 31.39, he actually picked up seven tenths over where he practiced from. Wow. So, I mean, that's a pretty big pickup. He's still not as quick as he wants to be, I think. And uh, Ron Barfield has already shut his number 73 down and uh, bringing it back here to Pitt Road. Here's Bob. Kevin Grubb was fastest in practice, but in this heat, Kevin, can you back it up? Tell you what, I thought it was hot at 9 o'clock this morning, man. It's um, it's kind of a little bit hotter, but not much. Um, we really haven't run that slow of a lap so far today, so um, I think we, we have a good chance at it. I mean, like I said, if it was cool this morning, now we're qualifying eight, I'd worry a little bit, but I, I think we got a good car and we're in good in the heat. Back to you guys. Jamie McMurray. In the yellow freight number one. This spring, we talked about it earlier, coming to the flag with Todd Bodine. Bodine got there first, McMurray got there backwards. Just another one of those Darlington finishes this track is so famous for. That was on the same weekend that Ricky Craven and Kurt Busch had their finish just the day before that. This is the same car that you saw going backwards across the uh, start finish line. In fact, this group has run this car four times this year. Every time they race it, top 10 finish it. One Rockingham, second Darlington you were seeing. And then Dave, David Stremme, who also runs this car, who will race it next week at Richmond, he finished third at Nashville and 10th at Kentucky. So good race car. 
Winner at Rockingham, runner-up at Darlington. Third at Daytona in July. Paul McMurray. What do you mean winner at Rockingham? He dominated that race at Rockingham. What are you talking about? I think he may have showed up. Okay, Jamie, 29-38. Ooh, that's and a lap right there. That's the so great. far. And you notice he knew that's all she had, so he shuts her down after one lap. And he picked up almost a tenth from what he practiced. Uh, that is going to be a good lap in the heat of the day. You're right, Jeff. He stunk up the show at Rockingham, leading all but five laps of that race. If this is any indication, this is what this car is going to do again for him. Better watch out. Could be tough come Saturday. The 61 of Justin Ashburn, the 31W Insulation Chevy, was 28th in practice. A 30-81. If he can pick up a little bit from that, that'll put him with a pretty respectable qualifying run. We have 46 cars here, so that means to guarantee yourself a spot before we get into the provisional starts, you have to beat 10 cars to get in that top 36. took a provisional here in the spring and finished right where he started, 42nd. This one right there, you can hear the uh, rev limiter coming right there to keep him overdriving that corner. But that's not a bad thing, is it, Jeff? No, it's not, because Larry talked about it earlier. The key to going fast here is getting out of it early and then get back in the gas. And for Justin, he run a 30-86, and that's a good lap. Seventh fastest right now. Just a little bit slower than he ran in practice, but uh, oh, oh boy! Now that's more than a Darlington stripe right there. I think that's the reason why they call this place the track too tough to tame. She jumps out there right quick and gets you. I mean, that's the thing that'll happen in a race. How many times, Jeff, have you been working with a driver, even DW, who mm -hmm. won here several times, and you're going along, everything's good, everything's good, and that wall just seems to reach out and grab you? He got down on the bottom right there, and he started coming out. He just. He just missed the apex of the corner. He started turning way too late. You run out of racetrack. You actually run out of racetrack. And I would say as hard as he hit that wall, it's probably been the rear end housing, probably the trailing arms, everything on the right front. A lot of work to do on that car. Dave Burns. And Jimmy McMurray has jumped out of his number one car and uh, pretty happy with that lap you picked up. Yeah, I don't think you'll see a lot of guys pick up from what they ran in practice. Track temps a little bit hotter. Um, this guy might. He's pretty quick. Cool. <laughs> Kevin is, but um, pretty good lap for the Yellow Dodge. We uh, unloaded this morning in a race trim, and the car was has been good since since we unloaded it. Uh, same car we ran at Rockingham and at Darlington here uh, in the spring. So, if we're not on the pole, we've still got a really good car um, to race with. Okay, that's Jimmy McMurray, guys. Well, one thing I noticed about Kevin Harvick, Jeff, you and I were both looking at it. He really stayed up high off turn four, trying to keep that speed built up, coming to take that green flag. He knows a lot like Jamie McMurray. It has to happen on this first lap. Got that right, Larry. And I mean, he was making it happen. And we both of us kind of drew up because he just was splitting fine hairs coming off turn four right there, coming to get the green. Did it. He did. By three one hundredths of a second, he bests Jamie McMurray. Oh, that was terrible. I hit That was terrible. Not hit the wall. <laughs> Not hit the wall. <laughs> That's one of those times you say, make me a list of everything that's wrong. If the uh, sun stays out, I think we'll be okay there. That's Butch Hilton, the crew chief, trying to give a little bit of a confidence thing. Let me don't worry about it. The sun's going to take care of it. I think that lap will be okay, Bob. Casey Kane is inside his race car, trying to stay as cool as possible. Casey, you have a very fast car, don't you? Yeah, the uh, great Cups car is fast. Trouble, front straight away. Oh, kisses the inside wall. Kevin Grubb, who was our fastest man in practice. And again, he did that. We've, how many times have we seen this coming to take coming the take green? The green. Trying to do what Kevin Harvick did and carry as much speed as possible off the corner. He never gets off the corner. Oh, that's a shame. Let's have another look here. And this has come to take the green up high through three and four. Comes down just a little bit. Car just jumps sideways with him. Jeff just gets loose and he just loses it. And again, that's come to take the green when the tires are at their best. See the roof flaps deploy in there. 
you know, you, ha you hate to second guess the driver, but this is what happens at this racetrack. You know, we talked to him a few minutes ago. He was really feeling confident that his race car would hold the same type of grip that it had this morning. This is where this racetrack will get you in trouble every time. It doesn't have the same kind of grip when the heat comes up. So he's probably going to go for being fastest in practice to a backup car in provisional land. Tough break for Kevin Grubb right there because he did. He had a very fast race car all morning long. Here's Dave. Saw uh, Kevin Harvick have a, a fast lap on the clock, but uh, a little um, a little further analysis, Kevin. Uh, you didn't like that lap a lot, did you? No, I drove bad that lap. It, uh, you know, the honey roasted Reese's payday car was really good. I just, uh, I got on the apron coming off of two, and then I had to check up coming off of four. But uh, if that's what it takes, I guess it's okay. Kevin, we've seen Justin Ashburn get in the wall off of two. We saw Kevin Grubb have trouble. How hard is this track to qualify on? I mean, it's hard because with the new asphalt patches there's a lot of grip uh, coming up off of turn two so you're flat out uh, coming up off the corner and you know for the most part uh, if you miss it just that much here you're going to wind up in the wall so it's a tough place to race on okay hang on one second larry mack has a little something he's going to pass along here larry yeah i mean i was just going to tell kevin that car has looked so good all day long in practice mm -hmm. and qualifying just looks like he didn't hit mm -hmm. his marks when he qualified he, he was referring to the fact that it looks so solid in practice and qualifying you just miss your marks during the lap yeah i, I just missed my marks and uh, it was a little bit free off of two and we probably could have adjusted a little bit for that but uh, other than that i just missed my marks it has to be a very exact sport, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yes, it does, but if he ends up on the pole, how do we explain that? You don't, Mike. <laughs> right. Darlington, you don't. I mean, how many times have you heard the drivers we've inter interviewed so far as we watch Jason Shearer right there going to turn one, they go out and they say, we just don't want to hit the wall. Right. I mean, that's what you're trying to do. You're challenging this racetrack to try to squeeze every ounce of speed out of it Hopefully you just don't make a mistake and get in that wall. Jason Schuler trying to make his second start at Darlington back in the spring of this year. He started 20th on points, finished 22nd, driving the number 73 forward. There he is in the 67, and that's a decent lap, 10th at a 31-23. Jason looked nice and smooth on that lap right there. Everything looked like it's working pretty good. The race car looks like it's into the racetrack pretty good. He actually picked up just a little bit from what he practiced, about a half a 10. And it's so deceiving because you see right there below that white line right there, it's a different banking it's a different degree and I think that's what Kevin Harvick was talking about you do that a lot especially getting in the corner as you clip the apron it'll send you up the racetrack Kevin Harvick quickest so far Jason Shooter 10th and Kevin Grubb wondering about what might have been of NASCAR Bush Series qualifying from Darlington on Speed Channels. Brought to you by Parts Plus, America's family of auto parts stores and service centers. Mike Wallace in the Geico Chevy checks in at 29.91, and that is fifth fastest behind Kevin Harvick, Jamie McMurray, Casey Mears, and Joey Clanton. Good lap for Mike. Veteran Morgan Shepard right now getting ready to take the clock right here in the 89 car. He's got a little experience around this racetrack, doesn't he, Larry? Well, it's a good thing he has experience because this is the first lap he's making right here on this racetrack today. Did not make it out for practice. So he can only go faster than he ran in practice. Car's looking pretty good right now. Like he was off the throttle quite a while. And he's got to race his way in. This car has no order points, uh, no provisionals. Brand new team. 14th, 31 61. So that beats four cars, so he's got to beat six more to guarantee himself a starting position. Two second place finishes here in the Bush Series. And his best start third came. 
So we think maybe with that being the first laps on the racetrack, he may can actually pick up a little bit on his second lap. Second lap didn't look too bad, at least visually, all right, race track. Picks it up a little bit. Almost a tenth. Don't move him up a position, but he picks up some time. Bobby? A lot of heavy hitters coming in the second half of this qualifying order. One of them, Ron Hornaday. He's my best friend right now because he just brought me some water. And, uh, Ron, it doesn't even look like you're sweating. Well, it's actually, it's very hot out here. We're actually uh, standing here trying to get some sweat before you get in the car so you don't start dripping. But uh, hopefully our car is pretty good. We, uh, we unloaded good. And we changed some stuff on it. And we did a qualifying run. We weren't that fast. So we went right back to where we were. And uh, we're way off from what Kevin's at. But it's all right. If we can pull something out of our hat, we'll be all right. Second place last week at Bristol, and he's got the same car he had there. Ron Hornaday grew up in the California desert in Palmdale. This isn't hot, not compared to where he's from. Well, this is interesting. Uh, this is Brad Teague, who practiced the 77, because Mike Potter, who practiced this car, the 52, just qualified in the 77. Potter's time, 33-12. May well not make it into the field, but here is Brad T trying to better that in the number 52. And this car was 34th quickest in practice. Now, what were they doing? Playing musical chairs, musical seats, and when the music sure. stopped, they just wound up in those cars? Let's see if it paid Boy, off. Boy, good it run, did. Brad T. Seventh why. quickest. Like it was going around the racetrack in the morning. It looked good, but right now I'm Mike Potter and I said, hey man, you got my car. And now I'm out of the race in your car. What's the deal here? I wonder if we're gonna swap back for the race. Because the fastest this car ran in practice was 31.43, so it's a second quicker than it practiced. Well, that's great the job right today. Right yep, by Brad T, great job right there. It slows down about two and a half tenths on the second lap, which was expected. Good run for Brad. Dave? Well, Brad picked up. Mike Wallace did not pick up. The sweat on his brow may tell us why, Mike. Is that part of it, the heat? Well, you know, the hot, heat's awful uh, hot out there. Racetrack's slicking up. We just didn't make enough adjustments for it. We left the car the way it was in practice this morning, and, uh, you know, it was probably just a little bit too free, but uh, we'll take it and race from there. We'll take the Geico Chevrolet along with the South Carolina Educational Lottery this week. And uh, trying to, my daughter's race our legend car tonight and tomorrow night, so uh, hope she'll qualify a little bit better than Dad did today. All right, keep your eyes on the Wallace family, always racing somewhere. Qualifying continues here for the Bush Series race at Darlington when we come back. This is Jimmy Kitchens in the NRA Chevrolet. He started 28th here last fall. The first lap, 31.85, wasn't going to get the job done. They told him he needed to step it up on lap two, and he tried. That's hard to do at Darlington. Here you see him going through middle of three in turn four. Picking up the throttle, up the racetrack. A lot like Kevin Grubb while ago with that 26 car back. It just comes around. Not enough grip to hold the race car. But fortunately, there's enough apron at the bottom of this racetrack coming off turn four. He got her woe down and stopped before the wall got there. Very lucky man right there. You can believe that. But that's what happens when you get in a hurry here. You see, you go in, the car slides up. And when it gets up in that little white area, not gray here, it's white. All of a sudden, you lose all the back end. The grip goes away, and around the back end comes. So 21 drivers have made qualifying attempts. Kevin Harvick, Jamie McMurray are the quickest so far. Here's Casey Kane. The field here in the spring set by points. He started 25th. The pole center of Michigan, where he finished second. He was fifth quickest in practice, pretty fast. I just want to point out one thing, guys. Listen to his car when he came take the green. We've been talking about how important that is. He had to lift out of the throttle just a little bit to get it off of turn four. It could affect his first lap. 14 top 10 starts this season. Pretty good little qualifier. Yes. Looks like he's headed for another one, third fastest, and the fastest of the Fords at a 29.41. And like everybody that's ran quick, he knew the minute he crossed the start-finish line, that's as fast as he's going to go, boys, right there. Bob? Well, Mike, every week we speak about how points leader Scott Riggs and second place point man David Riggs are together on the racetrack. Well, you know what? They're together again on the qualifying line here at Darlington. Now I'm sitting with David Green. 
And David, I look at your face and you have something a little bit different on it, a little bit of hair growing from your chin. What's that all about? I missed a spot this morning. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, you know, just wanted a little something different. I, I've been known probably as the, the cleanest guy on the racetrack and I value that. I'm proud of that, but at the same time, been being picked on here a little bit lately, so I'm gonna grow me a mean streak and see if that helps us out any, but uh, just a little change of pace, but uh, still proud of my team. You know, we had a great run going again last week, some misfortune, but Scott's trying to draft me here a little bit, so uh, we hope we end up this way in qualifying and hopefully after the race. Guys, do you really think David Green can be mean? Hmm. Oh, Whoa. the wall goes Shane Meal. Quickest though, he stayed in the throttle 29 59. He's gonna shut her down. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Time, that. time to quit. But I'm gonna tell you what a tear this group has been on here lately. That's all I had. I was a bit free. <laughs> it was a lot free. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that may be the understatement of the day right there. Shane Meal is fourth fastest. Of course, Casey Kane is third. Racer Kenny Hendrick, the 1998 Formula Ford SECA National Champ, took the Insure94.com Chevy for a ride into the concrete. This was coming off turn two on his first lap. A lot like we've seen. I mean, that was into the wall hard. He was 19th quickest on this lap at a 31.79. He's one of the cars that just about has to get in the top 36. He went on and ran a second lap, almost ran the same speed, but he's halfway there. He's beat five cars. He's about has to beat five more. And I think what you're looking at right there, Larry, we talk about it all the time, when you have to go what these guys will do to try to get into a race. This is Casey Atwood in the U.S. Navy number 14. His fifth bush race at Darlington. He's never qualified better than 25th here. Let's see what Casey can do. He was 19th quickest in practice. Of course, this, this group right here of the remaining 10 races, they're going to run about all but about two of those remaining races with Casey. It's a pretty good looking lap here. And it's eighth fastest. 30.06. Exactly what he ran in practice, really. He ran a 30.07. So, if you can, uh, with the way these temperatures are, if you can back up what you ran in practice, then you're doing pretty good. Well, some of the drivers who were worried about making that top 36, like Justin Ashburn, John Hayden, and Jason Schuler, are now locked into the field. Slows down a tenth on that second lap. So right now, Casey will be eighth quickest. Dave? Well, I got two uh, drivers here, one of whom was in the wall in his qualifying lap, apologizing to his car chief a moment ago, one who wasn't. Casey Kane, let's go with you first. How'd you like your lap? It was better than uh, practice? Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I think we had a little more than that. We, the motor was surging through the corner, so eyes on it, and it was kind of going and then not going. But uh, it's still a good run for a great clips car. And yeah, I got into the wall in uh, practice, so they already fixed mine. Now you're not immune from this, are you? No, they got to work on Shane's now, I guess. Hey, Shane, uh, you're apologizing to Wesley there. He's got a little bit of work to do, huh? Yeah, he does, but it's nothing different. Anybody that watches bush racing knows that in practice, I scuff the wall every week. So it's nothing different, but at least it's acceptable here. Uh, we got a good good starting spot so far. I think we went up in the top 10 or 12, and I've never made a qualifying run here doing to it being rained out every time. So I'm looking forward to it. We got a really good race car, and we're going to get a sponsor on board. All we got is Ghoul's Pump, so we're going to find something. Hey, he can qualify, people. Bob? Well, Dave, Scott Riggs and I have been joking around about David Green. Green's goatee. He said he's trying to mimic you. Do you think it makes him look meaner? Well, I don't know if it makes him look mean. Uh, I know we all can be mean at different times, and we're definitely in a mean racetrack here. But all the guys on next week four is doing a good job, and uh, we need to pick up a little bit from where we uh, practice. Uh, I hope we can. It's awful hot, so we'll see. And uh, I know we, we all can be mean if we want to. If you want to see something mean, look at the points. That's true, a very tight point battle, guys. A hey, good run for Larry Gunselman. His first lap gets him in the show, but he has brushed the wall on lap two. Yeah, again, I mean, he was 14th quick as he's in the show. Why not Why not abort? Why run another lap? And now he's, they've got a bunch of work to do on the right side of that car. Well, tell me why, crew team. Come on, you up there with the radio. Why didn't you tell me I was fast enough? First, I'd have been on radio saying that's good enough. Back off, stop. If you didn't do it then, I'm going to start throwing stuff at you down in turn two. I hear you. Gunselman is 14th. 
And as of right now, as you see them go across the top 16, back through Jason Schuler there, are guaranteed a spot in the race tomorrow. Michael Waltrip next up to qualify. Battled Ron Hornaday to the finish at Bristol and put the Aaron's dream machine in victory lane. You mean on his head, don't you? Well, <laughs> put the car in victory lane. And <laughs> he can't do that as good as he did it 10 years ago. He needs to practice a little bit. But now we've got to tell the story about yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. Not everybody was, was here. Yeah, I mean, when he won at Bristol uh, roughly 10 years ago, uh, he stood on his head, looked a little classier than that, yeah. that one right there, and proposed to his wife, Buffy. So here's Michael. Let's see if he is a threat for the pole. Bobby? It's a wall here at Darlington, and I'm wondering if it has anything to do with the track temperature. We have been tracking it. Take a look at this. It is now up to 137 degrees, and remember, we started out the day at about 130. Well, it's seven degrees that big a swing. It, yeah, it can be. Can yes, be. yes here it, it is. can be. And then you see it just went up to 138 right there while he's holding it. And Michael's going to end up fourth quickest on his lap, and he decided that's all he could do, so he only ran one lap. 29.54 for Michael Walter. Kevin Harvick is quickest. David Green, runner up in the points by 28, the former series champ chasing Scott Riggs in the points, who will be up to qualify in just a couple of cars. While we were away, Brad Loney, driver from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, made his qualifying run and is in the show with a 30.98. David was 16th in practice. They've only ran this car once this year back at Lowe's in May and wrecked it, but uh, he's going to be sixth quickest to the end of his first lap. This is the same chassis that Jamie McMurray driving for the 27 team, which is his team last year, that actually won Atlanta at the end of last year. And that you're watching one more time, a good, smart crew chief driver car right there. Good lap. Just don't take a chance on it. Bring it on in. He only ran one lap, but it was a good one. Dave? And standing by with Casey Atwood, who is uh, currently, I believe, still 10th on the board, guys. At this point, Casey, uh, is this going to be a good car to race with, you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be a real good race car. We, uh, The car felt good, but the uh, cross members bottomed out real bad. Uh, going into three, and it just shot me straight up to the wall. So I needed to run two laps. I didn't want to. I wanted to get it all in the first, but I knew the first one wasn't any good because I shot up the racetrack. So we'll get it off the ground in happy hours that we got. So we've already seen your first save of the weekend, huh? Yeah, well, it, it wasn't, it did, probably didn't look too bad. It probably just looked like I slid up to the wall, but the, the car, the front end of the car was on hitting the pavement when it was going up there. So uh, pretty pretty scary, but we got through it. All right, this is a rough place, guys. Yeah, I mean, two things that happen. It may not bottom out in race trim because you're not going to be able to drive it in the corner near as deep once the speeds really slow down, but you're going to be down on air pressure, possibly even soft thrown springs to get the car in the racetrack. So there's a chance from that standpoint, it will bottom out. And there's one thing about racing here at Darlington. It's tough enough to drive having all four wheels on the ground, much less when you go down and bottom out on the cross member and you lose the grip of those front tires. Mike Harmon in the number 44 fans car, Chevrolet. This will be his fifth Darlington start. He lined up 31st here in the spring and finished 35th. He was 35th quickest in practice as well. I think you might want to point out that Mike was scheduled to go out earlier. He was supposed to qualify in the sixth position, but he had been excused because of a problem with his race car, and now they put him in line. This is where he's going out at this present time. So he kind of probably got a little bit of a break going out this maybe a little bit later. It looked like a nice clouds coming up here. Guys. Starting to roll in a little bit, yep. like Bob Dillner documented a while ago, the track temperature continues to go up, and Mike's going to be 27th quickest on his first lap, and that's uh, out of 30 cars, not too good of a lap. He'll have a provisional to fall back on, uh, apparently, unofficially. really wiggling. He, had, he was off the throttle a long time up there in the middle of turn three and four here on his second lap. Second lap is
is a second quicker. And only picked him up one position. Yeah. Huh? That, yeah. yeah. The good news is he's a second quicker. The bad news is one position better. 31.98 for Mike Harmon on lap two. Dave? And Michael Walter climbing out of the uh, dream machine here and uh, working on his helmet there just a little bit. Give him a chance here to uh, unplug a second. Michael, was that lap uh, what you were hoping for there to get everything you could? Well, we didn't have a good practice this morning uh, and uh, it was loose. And so when I went to qualify, I was a little timid. The car, Bobby Kennedy and all the boys made the Aaron's dream machine a lot better. And I just, uh, I wimped out on them. I should have had my right foot heavier in the loud pedal and I didn't quite do my job but uh well we feel real confident about the weekend the car's got a great setup and it, it's just been it's just been loose all day but uh, in race conditions this place generally tightens up so that might that might be a benefit just uh thank Aaron's uh, and all the support I get from them and uh glad they were there last weekend for that big win Michael Walter Mike Scott Riggs, first lap, 10th quickest in the Nesquik for 30.06. But I tell you, we were getting a report from Bob Dillner just a second ago that the clouds have rolled in and the track temperature immediately dropped 10 degrees, and that wow. gives the car, the tires, more grip, better grip. Riggs, in the first 12 races of the season, had only four top 10 finishes. And in the last 12 races, 10 top 10 finishes. And yeah, they've definitely got their program back on track. And you heard even with the conditions cooling down, his car was still loose. And you just, you've got to respect this racetrack. And I think that's exactly what Michael Waltrip was trying to say when he got out of the car. I was a little bit timid, but at the same time, you've got to respect, respect this place. Let's go back down to trackside. And Mike, uh, with David Green now, uh, picked up a bit from your practice lab. David, did you uh, is it, did you expect to pick up that much or, or even more? I knew I better, <laughs> or uh, Jason and all the guys are gonna kill me. It's a tough race track, and um, we unloaded this morning really good in a race stuff. We switched over to qualifying stuff, and I don't know if I could get into mode of qualifying that quickly. And, and doing, I couldn't tell Jason what to do with the car, so um, he made a lot of changes right there. And, I said, I'm going to go through there without lifting. Once I get back on the throttle, I'm going to hit the wall. So uh, our Timberwolf Pontiac did a good job there. And uh, I think we're better than even what we're showing. Uh, we're just trying to get all our eyes dotted and our T's crossed. But it is a very tough old racetrack. And uh, maybe this would be a good starting spot for us versus last spring. And you heard the advantage they've already gotten, guys. A little practice time in race mode. They're already uh, getting ready for that happy hour. But, Dave, that's we go back to what we were talking about a while ago with the car bottom and out. It is hard to flip even that driver around that quick. And as you see, Scott Wimmer, he's going to be 10th quickest on his first lap from qualifying the race trim because the pace is so much slower in race trim. I mean, it's a total different driving race car. car that Scott and this group won with at Pikes Peak uh, about a month or so ago when they ran this car in the spring. They just went to the Cup uh, debut of 2003 at Bristol last week and uh, here they're going to race out in a couple of weeks as well in the Winston Cup car. He's made five Garlington starts, finished seventh here in this race one year ago. So 10th fastest for Wimmer. Coming up next, Bud Paul qualifying for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. And you know, the most unique thing from practice is our current points leader, Matt Kenseth, was the quickest in practice. When was the last time that happened? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see if he can start up front. But full qualifying for the cup cars next, right here on speed. Johnny Sauter, 31st in practice in the Channel Lock Chevy. Now, uh, in addition to Schuler, Rick Markle is now locked into the top 36. Here he is, there he is, the top of your screen, going across in 22nd. So he is in the show. And Johnny finished fifth here in the spring, driving the 21 car because Kevin Harvick did not race that car. I sat down and talked to Johnny for quite a while yesterday, and his plans are totally unknown for next year. He said, I can almost tell you. And right now, he's sitting eighth in driver points driving these two race cars. He said it probably will not be the same program as this year driving the two different cars. 14th for Sauter on his first lap of 30.35. Oh, 
that's as close as you can get to that wall. I was going to say on our first lap when Larry was talking, that car was really loose right in the middle of the corner. It really wasn't looking like it was down in the racetrack and under him like he wanted it to be. But I'm going to tell you what, Jeff, he's picked about three quarters of a second up from where he practiced. So they ought to be pretty pleased with this qualifying run, even though it don't look like it's driving that good. Sauter going for two and is just eight one hundredths slower. So Kevin Harvick is quickest. Jamie McMurray, Casey Kane, Michael Waltrip, and Shane Meal are the past five so far. This is Ron Young, who's just completed his qualifying pass at 31.22. That is fast enough to make the show. And for a guy that does every bit of the work by himself on this race car, except at the racetrack, I'm sure he'll be pretty happy with that. Graduate of the All-Pro Series. NASCAR. In demand, Sunday experience more in-car camera action. You get in-car camera channels with virtual dashboards, real-time in-car data, and live team audio. Call 1-888-SPORTS-IN to order the package on digital cable. If they just won an Emmy for a NASCAR in demand. Ashton Lewis Jr., the Civil Air Patrol Chevy. Finished 25th here in the spring race. Finished 11th here in 2000. He's made eight starts at Darlington. It's 22nd quickest in practice. This has been one of their better race cars right here. About every time they run this car, they finish in the top 10. He'll be 14th quickest, and he will be one lap and done with 30-15. And here's Bobby. We are with Kyle Busch. And Kyle, we want to know, they call this the track too tough to team. So how does an 18-year-old come here and be top 10 in practice? Well, I guess you just come here after your test. And, uh, you know, you make laps in your test, just become comfortable with the place. And you come back and try to do the best you can. And earlier in practice today, we got a little scuff. But, uh, you know, I guess some Darlington stripes are real easy to get. And we found out how easy they are. Got a shot at the pole here? Um, I don't believe so. I hope a top five start. That's what we're aiming for. You know, that'll be great, actually, to start up front here in the Southern, uh, you know, for the race this weekend. But uh, Harvick and them boys are always tough in the Bush Series, so we'll see what we can get out of her. Dave? Well, Bob standing by with Scott Wimmer. Now, you lost just a little bit from your practice time, Scott. Was that weather, track, or driver, or a little of all? Uh, I think a little bit of both. Uh, got a little loose on our first lap, and that's about all you have here with the tires at Darlington. So, uh, had to back out of it a little bit. I, I thought we could run at least with a great practice, but we, we're only a little bit off of that. But uh, Stacker 2 Chevy is really good. Uh, looking forward to be back at Darlington. It's a real driver's racetrack, and we'll have a good run solidly in the field, Mike. Here's Ron Hornaday, the AC Delco Chevy. Hornaday will be on track side with us tonight here on speed. 15th fastest, 30.18 for Hornaday, who has the second best average start of all Bush Series regulars, right behind Scott Riggs. Pretty much on the mark on race day. He's completed more laps than anybody in the Bush Series. Jamie Mosley's first lap, not fast enough, 32 flat, and he tried too hard on lap two. We've seen this before. 32 flat on lap one, right side flat on lap two. Uh, how do you say that same verse, same song? Same song, second verse. Yeah, there you go, something like that. So uh, Mosley, we may have a provisional here. Let's show you what happened to Mosley. How many times have we seen this already in this qualifying session? You're carrying so much speed off this corner, and you just run out of racetrack right there off turn two. I think we need to try to explain something to you. Because the way one and two is designed, you go in, and you actually run up, and you drive straight at that wall. And just before you get there, you have to kind of cut the car one more time. And if you're carrying too much speed or you don't have the right uh, apex off that corner, up jumps the wall, and bam, you're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, turn two goes forever. I always call it turn 2A and turn 2 Greg Biffle, the Bush Series champ, driving for Joe Nemechek and Ed Evans in the Kleenex number seven. Now, Mosley's bad luck is Stan Boyd's good luck. That locks Boyd into the field. Otherwise, he would have been headed home. It'll be interesting to talk to Greg Biffle, no matter how he qualifies right here, because I think that car really bottomed out going off into turn one. You heard the same yeah. thing I did. It went down there and you used here, go just hit the racetrack real hard going into one. Fourth. Good lap for Biffle, 29-46. Bob? 
Down here with Stacy Compton and Stacy, how are you surviving the heat with this uniform on? It's it's this highly trained. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it's hot. It's hot. I tell you what, you know how hot it is. Have you put your ass hand on asphalt yet? No, I haven't. Let's, we'll have a little competition. See who can hold their hand on the asphalt the longest. Because I know I'm used to this. I can. I can I'll win this. I think I can beat you. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. Here we go. This asphalt has been. A, hey, wait a second. You're cheating. It's fireproof. I'm used. I mean, I've got to do this. I can't burn my hand. Hey guys, is that fair? I mean, my hand is about to burn off. Hey, You're in the shade. Hey, you made I mean, the deal, cheating. Bob. You made the deal. Deal with it. All right, I'm done. <laughs> he wins. I'm a wimp. Bobby Hamilton Jr. Now the going homers. Here's the Marines Ford coming out before its qualifying pass. Pole winner at Pikes Peak. Victory Lane at Kentucky and Chicago Land. Looks like Kenny Hendrick and Jimmy Kitchens are headed home, along with either Morgan Shepard, Gus Wasson, or Dan Pardis, depending on how things turn out here. I don't know if it's going to be fast. It has looked awfully good. He's looked been an awfully awful good. Hard, and he was really seventh has. quickest in practice. Eighth. Eighth quickest in qualifying right now to 29.71. Bobby and this group going to attempt to make the Winston Cup race here in about a month out at Kansas City. So eighth on the grid for Bobby Hamilton Jr. thus far. Still seven cars left to go. And it really comes down to Morgan Shepard. Now Morgan's made his run. He is 30th right now. If he beats one more car, he's in the race. And if all the other cars run faster than Morgan's lap, he's headed home. Ricky Hendricks, uh, GMAC Chevy, number five. This will definitely be a bullet for Kevin Harvick because Brian was second quickest in practice. Brian DeMar will make his 50th career bush start. He was glad to see the checkered flag last week in Bristol. He came home seventh, but the entire last five or six laps, the right rear tire was going down, and when the, he got to the hauler after the race, it was completely down all the way on the rim. I'd rather be lucky and good any day. Every now and then, decent luck. In the last 10 races, he started in the top 10, nine of the last 10 events. And he's going to do it again, fourth for Brian Vickers, 29.45. He lost about a tenth and a half from what he ran in practice. If he could have backed up what he ran in practice, he'd have beat Kevin Harvick. But uh, again, I think the track is still heating up. Dave? Like with Greg Biffle now, uh, Greg, did you miss it all in that lap or did you just get what the track gave you? I missed maybe just a little bit. Left uh, here on the table down there and entered the corner a little lower than I had been uh, in practice down there three and four. But uh, pretty much got all I could get out of the Kleenex car. These guys uh, these guys are doing a great job here and uh, I'm glad to be you know, able to drive the seven car for them and, and have a lot of fun. Looks like we got at least a top ten start spot. Uh, top five right now, so we'll see what happens. All right, Mike, he'll run across the track and uh, get ready for Winston Cup qualifying. And that's coming up next right here on Speed. The 87 of Kyle Busch, the Ditech.com Chevy. Definitely heard him bottoming out as he went off into turn one. But, you know, let's talk about it like this here. What's bottoming out? If you notice, he's got tailpipes that look like hanging out on the right left-hand side of the car. If you go across the apron, you can kiss those just a little bit, and it doesn't upset the car as bad as, you, as it sounds. This is only his third NASCAR Bush Series race. He's never started out of the top five. Wow, eighth. For somebody who's never seen this racetrack, that's quite a run. And a good lap for him, and he knows that's about all she had there on that first lap. Bob Dillner. We are walking along with Jason Keller. He has six straight top ten finishes here, but you stole my temperature gauge. Why? It's hot out here. I tell you what, uh, I'm a Carolina boy, but I'm, I'm from the upstate, not down here on the low state, but uh, got a good race car. Uh, Albert Sport is really running good. Uh, I got a little shot at him. I'm going to have to get a perfect lap. Uh, we ran a 50, a low 50 in practice, and uh, it's going to take a mid-30 to be on the poles. So uh, see what we got. And we'll see pretty soon, Dave. And standing by with uh, Bobby Hamilton Jr. Bobby, were you happy with that lap or no? Uh, not really. Not. I mean, I know we didn't. We can't run what we did this morning because of the heat and everything. But we uh, stuck some left rear spring in it, try to give a little bit of help off, a little bit free off, and we was great in one and two. But three and four, we just couldn't use none of the gas. Man, I think that's a lot of the problem. You know, some of the guys who hit it right qualify good and. Uh, 
and just kind of the same old deal if you if you ain't been on in a couple hours kind of lose track of the racetrack and as you can see the cup guys knew what to do so but good thing about it great race call maybe not a good qualifying car but just miss a little bit we'll just go get there about Saturday and as he pointed out guys a track with two very different ends yes it is built in 1950 and the west end of the track is smaller to accommodate the middle pond outside what is now turn four. Turns three and four is the little end. Turn one and two is what we call the big end, shaped like an egg. The banking is very similar in both ends, 23 and 25 degrees. It's just the shape is different. Stacy Compton's going to end up 14th quickest on his first lap, and he'll call it quits. Well, hard to imagine you'd need charcoal on a day like this. <laughs> Not really. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of looking out the back window over here, and I can see that minnow pond and thinking about, you know, I'd look really good right about now going swimming. <laughs> yes, it was. Kind of kick back, relax. Good run for Compton, 14. And now Morgan Shepard's going to have to sweat it uh, because it's pretty much up to Gus Wasson. If Wasson, who practiced 26th fastest, makes the top 36, Morgan Shepard will likely be headed home. doesn't make the top 36, then Shepard is in. Gus's time in practice was a 30-69, and that would definitely put him into the show. So the 29-year-old from Lincoln, North Carolina, who's made two Darlington starts and three starts this year, Bristol, Nashville, and Kentucky. That's his shot. Right now, with the way that the qualifying session has, has slowed down for practice, if you just run in the low 31s, you're in good shape. That car looked nervous off the corner. He'd be nervous, too, <laughs> coming <laughs> up off that corner like that. Let's go or go home for Gus Watson. Good lap, 28, 30.89. And Watson will race here tomorrow. Where's that crew chief, Larry? Where's that crew chief? I don't know. He needs to be keying that button right now. There you see him getting real loose, nervous again. More nervous than the first lap off turn two. Pushing that envelope. And here at Darlington, you don't want to push the envelope. No, you do not. And she will push back. Exactly right. He slows down uh, about three tenths on that second lap, but he is in the show. Let's double check this. 43 cars have had their chance at the track. There are only two left lined up to run. We are told that Tammy Jo Kirk will not make a qualifying attempt, and that will we'll see how that sorts out in the provisional uh, group. Dave? Brian Vickers has had a chance to uh, discuss things with Crew Chief Lance McGrew. What did you guys decide about your lap, Brian? Um, they're all real happy with it. I'm satisfied with it. Uh, I don't know, you know, first of all, I want to pause for a second and say uh, hey to Joey um, back home at the shop. Um, congratulations on your boy. Um, I send best wishes on Caden. I uh, hope it all works out and, and uh, he gets better. But uh, back to the car, it just, uh, you know, I thought it was going to be better than what we had run in practice and it wasn't. You know, I must have messed up somewhere. Uh, I'm sure I'll figure it out when I drive myself crazy trying to find it. But, uh, you know, it was still a good lap. It'll be a top five start, but it's not quite what I wanted. Well, and it'll be top five guys. It'll be the best qualifying run he's had here yet in his career. Right, Tim Fidoa on the track. If he bumps Kenny Hendrick out of the top 36, Hendrick is headed home. And because Tammy Joe Kirk will not make a qualifying attempt, that will lock Morgan Shepard into the top 36. And the 59-year-old from Conover, North Carolina, will be in the race tomorrow. Tim will be 23rd quickest on his first lap, which is exactly the position he practiced in. Tim got his first career Bush Series pole here back in March of 1995. Had a great run going at Bristol last week, and with 26 laps to go, got wrecked. Not of his making. No, and I think he handled that quite well, and he's handling this quite well also, Larry. Somebody said, hey, you're in. About three quarters of the way down the back straightaway, he shut her down, bring her on the pit road so he can race tomorrow, get ready for a happy hour here coming up later on. Dave? We're going to squeeze in on some more conversations here with uh, Kyle Bush breaking it down with his guys. Kyle, uh, you happy with that lap? 
No. <laughs> you're, you're never happy with your lap if you slow up from practice, but uh, I guess we'd rather be safe than sorry here at Darlington. You know, we uh, had a little mix-up in practice, but we came out all right. This uh, 800 Ditec 1 Chevrolet was pretty good, and we slowed down a little bit through turn two, but uh, three and four was pretty good, we felt. So we should be all right with a top ten start, and we'll go after them in a race. And you're happy to be racing here at Darlington. Uh, needed a birthday before you could uh, start, start here, right? Yeah, actually, this uh, this whole season, I guess, we've been kind of waiting for. But uh, we're having a great time doing it, and you know, gaining experience this year, going after next year. That's what we're that's what we're doing. All right, good to see Kyle Busch here at Darlington, Mike. Jason Keller will be our final qualifier. Keller comes in here Ooh, into the standings and into the wall. My gosh. Yeah, I mean, in his last four Darlington starts, he has started in the top three. All four of those starts. With what happened down there in turn one and two on this lap. Ron Barfield is the man on the bubble. And for Barfield, it's whether or not he starts 36th or takes a provisional. And Keller's lap is good enough for 24th. Good enough to send Barfield to provisional land. So Kevin Harvick is the Bud Pole winner. Morgan Shepard gets the final spot on time. And unofficially, the three drivers who would head home would be road racer Kenny Hendrick, Jimmy Kitchens, and Dan Hardis. We'll verify that when we come back to Darlington. Kevin Harvick has won the pole for tomorrow's NASCAR Bush Series race at Darlington Raceway. Jamie McMurray will start alongside, and it's Chevy Dodge Ford in the front three spots. Imagine that. A little bit of parody right there. But, boy, I'm going to tell you what. Kevin Harvick only has 11th Bush start this year. That is his ninth top five qualifying effort, three bud poles. Led the most laps in five races this season. No reason why tomorrow wouldn't make that six. They've had a lot of success uh, with that uh, payday Chevy. And, and just look at that team, Mike. You know, they're doing it with two different drivers. And I was talking to Butch Hilton yesterday, and he said, you know, and there you see the three drivers that failed to qualify, Dan Partis, Kenny Hendricks, Jimmy Kinchin. He said, we're like a football team playing with two starting quarterbacks. Nice problem to have. Here's Bobby. Well, Kevin Harvick is already in his Goodwrench Winston Cup car, but Kevin, congratulations on the pole, but you went out 18th. Did you think it was going to hold up that long? <laughs> That's a long time to sit there and wait, but uh, Butch Hilton and all those guys on that honey roasted uh, Reese's and Payday car uh, did a great job. Uh, I don't have the best record here at Darlington qualifying, but uh, you know, to get a, get a pole is pretty cool. But he's already has three wins this year in Bush Series competition, guys. He'll start from the pole, and here's a look uh, back outside the top 10. Okay, let's start with the top 10 with McMurray's Dodge and Casey Kane's Ford, Brian Vickers, Biffle and Waltrip, some veterans there. Shane Neal, Kyle Busch. Pretty the big surprise there. I mean, I think it was a great run by Kyle Busch. And David Green, ninth. The battle in the points between uh, at the top, Green and Riggs. Riggs will be back in 16th. A lot of Bushwhackers there in those first three rows. Casey Mears 11th, Joey Clanton 12th, and Mike Wallace, Stacey Compton, Scott Wimmer, Scott Riggs, Casey Atwood, Mike Bliss, Ashton Lewis, and Ron Hornaday, the top 20. NASCAR Bush Series action tomorrow here at Darlington. Right now, stay tuned on speed for Winston Cup Bud Pole qualifying. <laughs> 